you can go to college and learn from somebody that doesn't have a farm and they'll give you an ag business degree you know most of the people teaching college don't have a farm don't know how to manage it and don't want a farm I say if you want to learn how to do something try to study under the person that can do it the best that he can do there, there are jobs everywhere you have to create a job you don't get a job you make one Americans have taken food for granted for far too long because Americans have been able to buy food at artificially low prices with the average American family spending only 10 percent of their income on food however on October 30th 2009 NIA published an article predicting inflation would appear next in food and agriculture NIA said a worldwide shortage of farmers combined with food inventories falling to record lows is setting up the perfect storm for an explosion in agriculture prices from the time NIA wrote this article until now we have experienced the largest ever short-term increase in agricultural commodity prices corn has risen by 75 percent wheat by 65 percent soybeans have risen 51 percent sugar 45 percent orange juice has risen by 58 percent coffee has risen 71 percent and cotton has risen 124 percent because very few Americans went to school to become a farmer and everybody needs to eat agricultural commodity prices will continue to skyrocket and farmers are going to get wealthy in the years ahead while lawyers and bankers will see a dramatic decline in their standard of living the free market will adjust and see to it that lawyers bankers and other non-producing financial service workers see a 90 percent decline in their real incomes everybody can't be a college graduate somebody's got to grow food you know everybody can't ride the wagon somebody's got to pull it somebody's got to be taking some risks somebody's got to be thinking somebody's got to have sweat last summer uh, this lady I was telling you about that bought some cattle from us she came here to get some cattle in August and my grandson was downstairs splitting firewood and we burned firewood in this building because it saves us about six hundred dollars a month over burning propane so uh, my grandson was cutting firewood and he was swinging the axe down here and splitting logs and he it was August and it was about 95 degrees and she came in here to sit down and she says uh, there's a kid down there cutting firewood he said the sweat's dripping off of his nose I said what'd he do wrong <laughs> he didn't do anything wrong it's his job he's cutting firewood <laughs> that's her grandson he's 14 you know, he'll cut you know six cords of firewood a day that's what he does. The only thing that has been supporting the U.S. service sector economy for so long is the U.S. dollar's status as the world's reserve currency and the world's willingness to hoard trillions of dollars in U.S. dollar reserves in order to trade oil and other valuable commodities. The U.S. dollar became the world's reserve currency because it was backed by gold and the U.S. had the world's leading manufacturing base. Today, the U.S. dollar is a fiat currency that is backed by nothing, and our manufacturing base has been rapidly deteriorating, with most of the products the world buys now made in China and other Asian countries. The Federal Reserve just announced that it will print another $600 billion, which will dilute the purchasing power of the U.S. Treasuries held by our creditor nations and cause them to soon abandon the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency. The entire U.S. economy is a Ponzi scheme that is dependent on the rest of the world continuing to buy larger amounts of U.S. Treasuries. Pretty soon, not only will the world stop buying our Treasuries, but they will dump the Treasuries they already own. All of our deficit spending will have to be paid for by outright money printing. Although the government and media would like you to believe the U.S. economy is going through a recovery, the truth is, the U.S. economy is on life support. It is impossible to have an artificial boom created by artificially low interest rates from the Federal Reserve without a major depression afterwards. The U.S. real estate bubble was the largest artificial boom in history. 
The panic of 2008 was the free market trying to correct the imbalances with a bust. But the Federal Reserve prevented a necessary depression from happening by taking trillions of dollars of worthless assets onto its balance sheet. None of the imbalances have been fixed, and the real depression is still to come. But unlike the depression of the 1930s, which saw falling prices, the upcoming depression will be a hyperinflationary Great Depression with prices for food, energy, and everything else Americans need to live and survive soaring through the roof. All young Americans today should be entering the workforce as soon as possible in order to generate enough income so they can accumulate physical gold and silver. When the US dollar collapses, only those with gold and silver will be able to buy food and other goods needed to live and survive. Those with the most gold and silver will have the best chance of surviving the upcoming collapse of the US dollar. Our country needs to wake up to the reality that the world is changing and Americans will need to undertake new methods of survival. The American mindset has become so obsessed with the belief that college is the key to success that by the time most people wake up to the truth, it'll be too late. One NIA member recently took his son to the doctor and the doctor asked his son if he was going to attend college. After his son said he doesn't know what he wants to do, the doctor went on for 10 minutes praising the virtues of a college education. Our member then explained to the doctor the realities of our new world and how college is a scam and no longer worth attending. The doctor didn't know what to say except, well, over time, college graduates make more. NIA believes that the future of education is over the internet. Americans today can purchase just about any type of product they want over the internet for substantially less than they can find it in a retail store because online retailers have substantially less overhead costs. Walmart's biggest competitive threat today is not Target, but is actually Amazon.com, which now has a $79 billion market cap and is fast catching up to Walmart's $204 billion market cap. The largest and most profitable college of the future will be an online college that attracts all of the most successful professors from around the world and allows them to teach an unlimited number of students over the internet. Students will have the opportunity to be taught by the very best in any field of their choice from the comfort of their own home. They will receive a much higher quality education for only a small fraction of the cost of attending a traditional college. By the end of this decade, NIA expects online colleges to gain at least a 25% market share of the total higher education industry. Well, you actually also teach online courses as well. I mean, do you think that that's the future, online learning? I think the future actually is online learning. If the grid can stay up, which I hope it does, I think most people have an interest in seeing that happen. So I think a lot of things could fall apart before the grid and the internet does. So I think that's the way. I always ask my students, does it really make a whole lot of sense for all 20 of us to drive here every Tuesday and Thursday to get together to talk about digital media stuff when we really could do this with a little bit of re-engineering and actually have Instead of all of us coming together, if I came to you wherever you were, I think that's a model of the future. If you figure out each, each student probably spends two gallons of gas a day to come to class, times 20 students, times 15 weeks, add up how much gas that is and how much that costs. Who wouldn't want to have that money back, especially over a couple of semesters? Especially now because we have a much richer media environment to use for teaching and learning. I can now embed videos in my classes. I can bring in things like the National Inflation Association videos to my classes. I can bring dynamic, compelling things to my class that even in the old days, if I was really a compelling speaker, it's far better now. So even a mediocre professor like me can make my class rich and interesting, even in the online environment. You tell me the difference about sitting in an auditorium in uh, NYU with a thousand other people or sitting in front of your screen and listening to a professor. What's the difference? Look what's going on in India. They estimate some 500,000 Indians have gotten university degrees in engineering through online, interactive view, is what I called it back then. 
Well, how many did we turn out in the USA in the same period? Eh, about 150,000. It's the future. The future is now. But they're holding us back on real internet learning, real, real digital online learning, because of the people that want to control the system, the ones that want to have the tenure. The whole college industrial complex, that's all it is. It's a racket, just like war's a racket, colleges have become a racket. While millions of Americans are at home right now wondering why are food and gas prices going through the roof, there is a small group of U.S. citizens that are preparing right now for the collapse of the U.S. dollar. These select few Americans will not only survive the upcoming hyperinflationary crisis, but they will be positioned to prosper and become wealthy as the rest of America is going to go broke. On December 11th of 2009, NAA declared silver the best investment for the next decade at only $17.40 per ounce. Just recently, we saw silver hit a high of nearly $50 per ounce for a gain of 185% for our members. In fact, in February of 2010, NAA suggested silver call options that ended up making a gain of over 1,000% at its high. You know, it amazes me how many people have been contacting us recently. I mean, every week we receive countless emails from people that say that they've learned more about economics from being a member of NIA for just one month compared to studying economics in college for over four years. NIA members receive weekly articles, videos, and updates with priceless economic information that the mainstream media is afraid to talk about. All across America, students are being brainwashed right now with Keynesian economic principles that got us in the debt crisis that we're in today. We are not going to solve our economic problems by making the same mistakes in the future. After the financial crisis in 2008, the U.S. should have went through a much needed recession where we saw the free market rebalance our economy from the ground floor. That way we would have built on a solid foundation, saw a real recovery with real economic growth in the future. A record 44.2 million Americans or 14% of our population are on food stamps right now to put food on the table. I mean, with the government about to go bust, these entitlement programs are a thing of the past. You know, two-thirds of Americans are getting ready to retire and actually believe that Social Security is going to be able to support 50% of their income. I mean, let's face it, retirement in America is also going to be ancient history. Even Americans that have millions of dollars in the bank will soon go broke. The new wealthiest class of Americans are going to be the ones that become educated and start learning about the truth about our U.S. economy. Start thinking for yourself. Sign up and become a member of NIA for absolutely free at inflation.us.